chapter 3. And I want to read one verse, and it's the most it's the most precious verse in the Bible. Every verse is precious, but there'll be many in heaven because of this one verse, and it's John 3, verse 16. It's the Word of God, and these are the words spoken by the Lord Jesus. And in John's Gospel, chapter 3, He said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we know that the Lord will bless that text to our hearts this evening. It was the 10th of May, 1973. It was a Thursday morning. A young man by the name of Franklin Cadu, 24 years of age, four miles outside Ochnacloy, was leaving the milk down at the end of the laneway from the farm. And as he reached to the end of the laneway with the creamery cans and the link box, Gordon Duncan, who was the local milkman, stood for a few moments to talk with him. Then at Cadoo's Lane, there was two big walls that are still there. And on each side of the driveway, there was nothing, only fir trees up by their side. Gordon Duncan spoke to Franklin for a moment or two, and then Franklin hopped up onto the tractor and he took her out onto the road and spun her around to head back up the lane. As he turned around on the road, gunmen came out from behind the wall. He saw the gunmen. Franklin tried to jump the wall and he got over the wall, only to jump into half a dozen more. They were there to kidnap him. Franklin Cadu was a young lance corporal in the Ulster Defence Regiment. And behind the wall of the end of the lane of his own home, there they murdered him. My cousin was on duty that day, and the call came in that there was a shooting on the Rahahai Road, the Bambur Road, we call it then. And my cousin will never forget the sight. Him and Cormac McCabe were the first two out at the scene. Cormac McCabe himself was murdered eight months later. My cousin Cedric Thompson said he never saw, he never witnessed a scene like it. John Cadu was big strapping farmer. He was the father. And he heard the shooting and he ran down to the lane. And when my cousin got to the end of the lane, big John was laying out over the wall. And he says, this is what they've done. Look what they've done to my son, my only son. You see, Franklin Cadu was an only son. He had a sister. But Franklin was John's pride and joy. He's the only son he had. And they murdered him. We had a lot of that around our part of the country. Dennis Wilson was an only son. And the whole art of that was, was to get the only sons off the farm so that the farms couldn't be kept on. And I'll tell you this, round our part of the country, I attended many weeks of only sons who died at the hands of wicked men. Dennis Wilson, Franklin Cadu, well, I wasn't old enough for his, Cecil McNeil, Ivan Hill, I stood at their coffins. And looking down at sons who died at the hands of wicked men. Maybe you were there as well as me. Boys, there was nothing heartbreaking to see mothers and fathers crying and broken as they carried their only sons from their homes on the day of their funeral. It was heart-wrenching. The pain of losing an only son by the hands of wicked men. And tonight, God wants to speak to us tonight on the death of an only son. The death of an only son. 
Because right in the very heart of John 3.16, you have there an only Son. And tonight, God wants to bring you face to face with His only Son. Right in the very heart of John 3.16, we read these words, He gave His only begotten Son. You know, dear friend, this evening, listen to me. The death of God's only Son, what does it mean to you? Throughout the thirty years of troubles and known as Ulster's troubles, I, boys, I'm telling you, it touched us when we're watching funerals every other night on television. Young men, young women, slain by the hands of wicked men in our wee province, and friend, it touched us. But tell me, what about the death of God's only Son? Does it touch your heart tonight? He gave His only Son to die for you and to die for me by the hands of wicked men. First of all, God wants us to see as to where He died. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 3, sorry, 23 and verse 33, it says, and at the place which is called Calvary. There they crucified him. I want you folks to know something tonight. You and I are accountable to the death of God's only Son. When you think of the death of every UDR man, you think of the death of every policeman, you think of the death of every soldier, you think of the death of every Roman Catholic who was murdered in cold blood in our wee province. Listen, somebody was accountable for their deaths. Just didn't happen. Somebody was accountable for it. Somebody was accountable for the death of every person who was murdered in our wee province. But listen to me tonight. Every one of us is accountable to the death of God's only Son. And it doesn't matter whether we're Protestant or Catholic. Every person is accountable for the death of God's only Son. Because you may read in Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, verse 33, and when they came to the place called Calvary, the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. It was at the place called Calvary, friend, where they took God's only Son and they crucified him to a cross. God's only Son, I'm telling you. And they drove big nails through his hands. And through his feet, and they stripped God's only Son naked, and they crucified him to the cross, and they lifted his Son up on that old rugged cross at the place called Calvary. God's only Son. And my friend, I want to say something tonight. God's only Son, I, his only Son, suffered shame at the place called Calvary. And he suffered shame. And he suffered pain. And suffered terribly. And you know the remarkable thing? The remarkable thing, God knew what was going to happen. And yet God sent him. God knew tonight all that was going to take place at the place called Calvary. God knew what would happen to His only Son. And yet, friend, even God knew what they would do to Him. God still sent Him. Why did God send Him for? Because God loves you tonight. God loves you. Friend, God loves you tonight. 
so loved you that he gave his only, his only begotten son. I'll tell you, I have only one son, and I wouldn't give him up for any of you. But God gave his son up for you, and he gave him up for me. Do you know what we read? We read in Romans 8, 32, He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. And you know, friend, that day at the place called Calvary, God stood back. Let it all happen. They plucked the very hairs from his face. The Bible says his visage was marred more than any other man. And we're talking about God's own son. And it was all for you. And all for me. I'll tell you something now, my dear friend. Every one of us in this meeting, see everyone in that over that row there, everyone in this row, everyone over here, including me up here, every one of us is accountable to the death of Christ, you know, and will all be answerable for it. The place which is called Calvary. I often think of that day, you know. The very sun refused the shame. The very rocks rent in twain as they saw their Creator being put to death. Aye. Even the sun couldn't shine as God's only Son was being put to the cross. He was on the cross three hours, you know. And when the three hours were up, darkness fell over the whole earth. The sun could shine no longer because of what was happening to God's only Son. But then again, child of their unsafe friend tonight, as we continue on with God's only Son, it's not only as to where He died we want to get till tonight. Listen to this wee bit. It's as for what He did. Why did God allow His Son to die? For what did he die for? Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture. As I have preached, and I have preached for years, man's greatest enemy is his sin. The greatest enemy to this world is not Muslims. The greatest enemy to this world is not ISIS. The greatest enemy to this world is sin. Sin. And every one of us were born in sin. And listen, friend, no man, listen, get this nonsense out of your head that you were born a Protestant. There's people in this town, and they say they're going to heaven. I was born a Baptist. I was born a Presbyterian. You were born a sinner. I just preach what's in the Bible. The Bible says you're born a sinner. And the Lord Jesus says if you die in your sin, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, one thing or another, if you die in your sin, where I am, there you cannot come. And God's only Son died for your sin. And he died bearing your sin in his own body upon the tree. You know, friends, this evening, you remember this tonight, sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Rodney Shields' problem was sin. My problem. I lived the same kind of life as Rodney. My, my life... My greatest enemy wasn't the drink. My greatest enemy wasn't the discos. My greatest enemy wasn't the dancers. My greatest enemy was sin. The root of all evil, sin. The root of all wickedness is sin. But you may say to me, but George, I'm not wicked. You may say to me, but I'm not cruel. Ah, but you still have sin. And I want you to know, friend, God gave His Son, only begotten Son, to the cross because of that sin of yours. 
See, I want you to see Christ tonight, God's only Son, who gave His Son to the cross for your sin. Do you know what you need tonight? You need to be saved from your sin. Listen, you don't need religion. There's more people has been driven into the fires of hell through religion, more so than drink. More so than drugs. Religion has pushed more people down the road to hell than anything else. Because you see, the Bible says, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man. Oh, it looks right. It feels right. It seems right. But the Bible says it's not right because at the end they're off of the ways of death. That's why the Lord Jesus went to the cross. He went to the cross to die for your sin so that you and I could be saved from our sins. You know, friends, this evening, you think tonight of the death of God's own son. His only son, as to where he died. And as for what he died. But we're coming very personal tonight. Because when we think of the death of God's only son, we need to ask ourselves and point ourselves to the reality as to who he died. For who he died. He gave his only begotten Son to die for you and for me. I want you folk to know tonight God loves you. God loves you that He gave His only Son to the cross of Calvary where He gave Himself for me, himself, nobody else, himself, for me. They want you to look to the cross tonight within your mind's eye. You think of those three words, himself, nobody else, himself, for me. You and I or the people who he died for. The death of an only son at the hands of wicked men. But you remember, friend, God had to watch the death of his only begotten son at the hands of wicked men. Big John could do. Look what they've done to my son. Look what they've done to my only son. There he was lying face down with his head in the drain. I shot him in the back of the head and the blood was run down the drain. How do you think God felt when they watched him putting his son to the cross? How do you think God felt when God looked down and they saw them driving the nails through his hands and feet? How do you think God felt man when they tied him to the scourging pole and the lashed lumps out of his back? How do you think God felt? We need to get this tonight. How do you think God felt? Because I'll tell you this, friend. It's for you he died. And for me. But here's the finishing point for why he died. For why he died. Here's for why he died. Are you listen up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's why he died. He died to save. 
He died to save you from your sin. He died to save you from going down to hell. He died to save. This country saw some terrible things. I met up with one of the lads about a, maybe a year and a half ago when I was up at home. Talked about all the different boys we knew who were murdered. We lost 10 out of Achnachlau UDR alone. Lost three out of Kjelladen RUC. Lost two out of Ballygolly RUC. Lost one out of Achnachlau RUC. Remember the sitting down with the boys and saying, what was it all for? When you think of it today, what was it all for? And then we came to the conclusion, where would we have been if they didn't have joined, if we hadn't have joined? Where would we have been if nobody had a joy? Somebody had to do it. The pain, the sorrow, the heartbreak, the loss. The death of God's only son. What was that for? What was that all for? It was all for the purpose to save you to save me. But you know what the good news is tonight? He's not on the cross. He's alive. On the third day, he rose again from the dead, and he's alive and alive for more. And you ask me how I know he lives. I'll tell you how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. That's how I know. Like Rod and I, I used to run to the discos and the dancers neck the idiot. I didn't write off three cures, wrote off one cure. But I'll tell you, nobody satisfies the life like Christ. Nobody puts joy into a life like him. I tried the broken cisterns, oh, I tried it all. But nobody puts it, nobody puts the real McCoy in here. <laughs> Only Christ can do it can do it for you because the Christ who died is in here and he can be in your heart tonight but you think this think of the pain God had to endure to let his only son die at the hands of wicked men so that you and I could live and be saved from our sin. Friend, tonight, don't you turn your back on God's only Son. Let's pray. Let's take these moments of quietness.